I'm going to go through the solutions of the review problems. And these problems cover transfer functions, so modeling systems in the frequency domain, coming up with the transfer function, solving for the time response of a system using the Laplace transform solution, and then also coming up with a state space representation for the solution. So the first problem, we have this translational mechanical system and we're asked to find the transfer function. And on the solution, I show the free body diagrams for the three different masses. So here's the outer mass and then the mass. Well, this isn't really a mass. Um, but anyway, this point associated with the motion x3. But this isn't exactly necessary. I just did it um, for completeness and for in case you wanted to refer to it. So we've got the, the box and let me just talk about this free body diagram quickly. We hold x2 and x3 constant and then imagine the box x1 moving in the positive direction and draw the forces associated with that. And so we'd have this spring force, the damper, and then the other spring. So the spring force, the damper, and the other spring. So if this doesn't move and this doesn't move and the box slides that way, then this spring is going to push, push back, this damper is going to push back, and this spring is going to pull back. So that was this force, this force, and this force. And then if we hold x1 and x3 still and we let x2 move, then the spring is going to pull to the right and the damper is going to pull to the right. So if this is fixed and this is fixed, then this thing is going to pull here and pull here. And then finally, if we hold these two fixed and move x3, then this spring is going to push on the box. So that's this force here. So 15 times x3. And then do the same thing for the mass with x2 and then the motion at x3. The only difference with x2 is we have the applied force, F. And I just went through and used the shortcut for mechanical impedances. And this is in, I believe, section 2.5 of the book. But we have the mechanical impedances associated with the motion in x1 times Laplace transform of the motion in x1 minus the impedances between x1 and x2 times the Laplace of x2 minus the impedances between x1 and x3 times x3. And that's equal to the sum of the applied forces at x1, which is zero. And let me talk real quick about what is meant by the impedances between x1 and x2. You can see here these different elements they have two ends. The spring has two ends and the damper has two ends. So one end is going to move with x1 and one end is going to move with x2. So these impedances are between x1 and x2. This isn't between x1 and x3 because neither end of this thing is connected with x3. And then impedances between x1 and x3, that would be mechanical elements with one end at x1 and one end at x3. So that's this spring here. So we've got the sum of the impedances between x1 and x2, 4s plus 1, so 4s plus 1, and then the sum of the impedances between x1 and x3, it's just 15, so that's 15. And then we get two more equations, so do the same thing for the motion at x2. So negative sum of impedances between x1 and x2, sum of the impedances associated with x2, and minus the sum of the impedances between x2 and x3. Uh, impedances associated with x2, that means all the impedances with one of, the, one of their ends at x2, so all the elements. So we've got this one, this one, and this one. And then the mass is uh, associated with motion at x2. So that would be 3s squared plus 20 times s plus 1. And that is all equal to the sum of the applied forces at x2, which is the, uh, the Laplace transform of the applied forces. So that's the Laplace transform of f of t. And so we get three equations. Putting those in matrix form, we get this matrix here, the coefficients, times this vector x, Laplace of x1, Laplace of x2, Laplace of x3, is equal to the Laplace of the input forces. So to solve, to get the transfer function, we would solve for x3 and that will be in terms of f, and then we would factor out the f. So to solve for x3, use Kramer's rule. So that would be the, de the determinant of this matrix, or this determinant here. Uh, 
um, divided by the determinant of this matrix. And this numerator here is just this matrix with the uh, third column replaced with uh, the right-hand side over there. And once we factor all those out and group everything, we come up with this transfer function. And like I said, there's a PDF of these solutions, so you don't have to look at this video. Now the second problem, we have a state equation, and we want to use the Laplace transform solution to find x of t. So our state vector is x and v. Our state vector comprises the variables x and v. And we want to find uh, the time response of x. So we're going to use the inverse Laplace transform solution. And to do that, we need to have initial conditions and the input uh, function. So that would be, in our state equation, input has the variable u. And in this case, the input is a force or as f, the function f. Oh, and that function is this delta function, I'm sorry, which is the impulse, unit impulse. Here's the equation that we're going to use. Here's the equation that we're going to use. The Laplace transform of the state vector is equal to the inverse of this matrix times the sum of these two. So let's start off with finding the inverse of this matrix. So we have S times the identity matrix minus A. And A is the um, state matrix. So here is A. Okay, so SI minus A is this. And to invert that, we just take 1 over the, de or it's the adjoint of this divided by the determinant. So here's the adjoint, and this denominator is the determinant. So we found the inverse of this 2 by 2 matrix. And then now we have to find this sum. Uh, and this u is a capital U, which represents the Laplace transform of the input function. So that's written here. U is the capital U is the Laplace transform of u of t, which in this case is, we called it f of t. And we're given that that's the unit impulse function. So the Laplace transform of the impulse function is just a 1. So now the initial conditions of the state variables were given that x at time 0 is 0 and v at time 0 is 0 so that's this vector and b we're also given is 0 over 1 I'm sorry the first element is 0 and the second element is 1 and then the Laplace transform of the input is just 1 so those add up to 0 and 1 now we can go ahead and do this matrix multiplication we get that the Laplace transform of the state vector is equal to and this fraction in this matrix is the inverse of SI minus A. So that's given here. So that's SI minus A inverse times X bar at 0 plus BU, which is this vector. And so that ends up giving us this 2 by 1 vector. And again, the Laplace transform of the state vector in this case is the Laplace transform of X and the Laplace transform of V. Now the problem asks us to find the time response of X so to do that, we just take the inverse Laplace transform of x of s. So we have the inverse Laplace transform of this element, which is 1 over s squared plus 50s plus 15. And so we just want to find the roots of the denominator and then do partial fraction expansion. I made a mistake when I wrote this. I had meant for the roots to be 5 and 10, which would have been the case if this had been negative 50 and this had been negative 15 but I wrote it this way by accident and so we end up with roots of 0 0.302 and 49.7 and then when we do partial fraction expansion we get that this fraction is equivalent to the sum of these two so the coefficient for this one is 0 0.0202 and the denominator is s plus 0 0.302 and the coefficient for this is negative 0 0.0202 and the denominator is s plus 49.7 so when we take the inverse Laplace transform of these two fractions, we get um, 0 0.0202 times e to the negative 0.302t minus e to the negative 49.7t. And hopefully that looks a little bit clearer in the PDF than it does on the video. And let me go ahead and uh, change... Oops, so I just took a picture, okay. Anyway,
Okay, so now the coefficients are right. So we'll, if for people who haven't done this problem yet, I've, I'll post these review problems and I change the coefficients so that now the um, roots will be 5 and 10. Anyway, moving on to the third problem. We have this system with gears, and we want to find state space representation. So we have three shaft displacements here. This displacement is different from this displacement, and then uh, this one and this one are independent. So we have three displacements, but only two independent motions. And so we want to find an equivalent system that has just two displacements, so the two independent motions. So we're going to reflect this moment of inertia onto this shaft, and then we'll multiply the input torque by the gear ratio. So we've got here the equivalent system. Um, the moment of inertia, here's the reflected moment of inertia, so it was 100 over 30 squared times 50, and that gives us 59.555. And then the input torque is 100 over 30 times the input torque. So here's our equivalent system. And we can write the equations of motion for theta 2 and theta 3. So we get that negative 100 times theta 2. So we just do the same thing, hold theta 3 as we did with the translational system in order to write these equations of motion. Um, We'll hold theta 3 fixed and move theta 2. So in that case, we rotate theta 2, and we get this spring is trying to pull it back the other way. So we have negative 100 times theta 2. And then we hold theta 2 still and move theta 3 in the positive direction. And so we get this spring is going to try to twist theta 2 in the positive direction. So we have 100 times theta 3. And the other force that we have, or torque, I should say, torque acting on this moment of inertia is 10 thirds tau. So here's that. And all those torques add up to... Um, the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration, so 55.6 times omega 2 squared. I just want to, instead of writing theta 2 double dot, I just, went to, I just wrote omega 2 dot, where omega 2 is equal to theta 2 dot. And we do the same thing for th motion at angular displacement at theta 3. From these two equations, we come up with the state variables of theta 2 and omega 2, and then we're asked to find the theta 1 as the output. And to get the um, output equation in matrix form, just first write an equation by itself, so uh, or write an equation for every output variable that you have. In this case, we only have one output variable, which is theta 1. And we know from the gear ratio that theta 1 is 10 thirds times theta 2. Now, the now for the state space representation. State space representation comprises a state equation and an output equation. So the state equation, here it is, is the time derivative of the state vector is equal to the state matrix times the state vector plus the input matrix times the input vector. So theta 2 dot is equal to omega 2, gives us the first row here. And then we use this equation to get the coefficients for the second row. Um, negative 100 over 55.6 is negative 1.8 uh, and that's our coefficient for theta 2 0 for omega 2, 1.8 for theta 3, and 0 for omega 3 theta 3 dot is equal to omega 3 and then we get the coefficients for the final row from this equation so we have 100 over 1 for theta 2, 0 for omega 2 negative 1 for theta 3, and negative 1 for omega 3 and then as far as input only this equation, which is the second row, has input. That's 10 third times the input force tau. So the coefficient, I'm sorry, 10 thirds divided by 55.6. So we get 0.06 is the coefficient there. And then here's the output equation. In this case, so typically we write it in matrix form where we have um, an input vector u, but here it's just a scalar, it's just the torque. And similarly for the output variables, we write an output vector, but in this case we just have one variable. And now we just need to put this equation in matrix form. So we need to write this equation as a linear combination of the input variables, I'm sorry, as the state variables and the input vector. So theta 1 is 10 third times theta 2.
and then the coefficients for the other state variables are all zeros. And that's the end of the review problems for the exam.